in the water And know that it won't last My light is brighter And I hope that it will last mm. You think that it's directions Ones you never choose It's the way that you're facing Determines if you lose Fortunes that you made, choices that you gave, you want it, you want it. Now I'm like the sun, bordering no one, you got it. And I love you until we get by. It's only when you want to Bear me all your fruit It's a labor of love And honey, I choose you mm. And I'm picking up the pieces The ones that we don't have it's the putting it together It's making me sad You're the reason why I can't touch the sky I want it I want it And I am like the sun Revolving everyone I've got it And I love you After all, isn't it the time that we make? And all the innocence we give and we take I've tried so hard to be there for you It seems it may mean disappearing for you I don't want to run, I don't want to try to fight it Every time I try, I find new ways to deny it I will try my best to keep my head nice and quiet for you You I don't want to hide, I don't want to make it right Anything you lose and should you really try and find it When I'm on my way, I'll keep my feet nice and quiet for you You After all, isn't it the fear that we face And all the bitterness we try and erase All of the reasons to keep me at bay Are the same reasons that I should stay I don't want to run, I don't want to try to fight it Every time I try, I find new ways to deny it I will try my keep my head nice and quiet for you You I don't want to hide, I don't want to make it right Anything you lose and should you really try and find it When I'm on my way, I'll keep my feet nice and quiet for you You I don't want to run, I don't want to 
my best to keep my head nice and quiet for you You I don't wanna hide, I don't wanna make it right Anything you lose and should you really try and find it When I'm on my way I'll keep my feet nice and quiet for you You
words you always bring And all of those things And your little lies That bring me down to you Will you stop? You're distracting me. Sorry, it's just three days. Three days to write a play. I can't do that, it's impossible. Not impossible, just very improbable. Still. Yeah, it'll be difficult, but you can pull it off. What's the plan, Stan? You got an outline, a theme, anything at all? Well, uh, I have about a page of schizophrenic ramblings, but it was going nowhere. Look, it wouldn't be so difficult. It's just, it's a prompt piece. I'm supposed to write about the pandemic and or modern society and the problems we face. And, oh man, I can't do this. Then don't. Easy. Problem solved. What kind of person would I be if I just gave up? There's no grace in that. Although I suppose it's not very graceful to heavily procrastinate either, but it's still better. It's how I graduated. Procrastinate? How long have you known about this? Uh, give or take three months. What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, don't yell at me. I've been busy, okay? I've been dealing with a lot. Yeah? Like what? My car broke down. My depression came back. I had my heart broken. I've been a little preoccupied. Hey, those are terrible excuses. Look, you got this, all right? You are a great actor and a mediocre playwright. I have faith in you. Thank you. I'll help you. Do you have any ideas? Any at all? Well, um, you know, we could do a, a melodrama. Quick, simple, and efficient, doesn't take too many characters, and is quite formulaic. All right. Sounds good. Go ahead. Begin. Uh, okay. All right. Um, the lights come up to show the dastardly Dr. Corona, M.D. They stand to proclaim their hatred for our hero, Clen. Cleanliness. Curse that Clen. Always thwarting my advances. Is it really so bad to want to take over the world? Curse him. Curses, curses, curse. Hey. Huh? What? Clem, you, you devil. How have you gotten into my lair? I'm not doing this. Oh, come on. You said you would help. I need you. All right. Dr. Corona, oh, wait, wait, you... Wait. Here, take this. Seriously? Come on, safety first. Think of others before yourself. Fine. Dr. Corona, wait, 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 wait. Why are they a doctor? The name sounds cooler that way. And I also really like the lab coat. It makes me look pretty. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, prepare to be destroyed. <coughs> Already? Man, you should probably see a doctor. <coughs> I, uh, I am a doctor. <coughs> this is normal. <coughs> just just give me a sec. <coughs> oh, hey, don't forget, six feet apart. Right, thanks. All right, come on, give me your best shot. You want my best shot? Do ya, punk? Well, how about this? <coughs> oh. 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 Uh. 
The end. What? Wait, seriously? I was just getting into it. Hey, you're still dead. You lay back down. That's it? That's not a play. Okay, well, if I gave the illusion I knew what a melodrama is, that might be untruthful. It's just, I don't like this. It's too goofy. I can't make a story out of it. All right, so what's next? Well, while you were playing a nifty game of disease tag, oh, you can, you can go, by the way. While you were battling the deadly persona of a deadly disease, I was thinking we could do something a little smarter. Only a little, though. Political comedy. That could work. Hopefully, um, Mr. President. Are they gone? No, sir, but you are perfectly safe. No reason to raise alarm. Oh. Oh, my. Sir. Where is the Twitter boy? Someone bring me the Twitter boy. Right here. Get this down. Protesters disgraceful. I am not scared. We will shoot you. Tweet. Sir, that seems... You, uh, you did a question... Oh, does Mr. President need his binky, huh? Poor little guy. <laughs> yes, please. Here you go, sir. Now, let's get you into the bunker, my little man. That was short. Yeah, I don't actually watch the news. I just heard about him hiding. Pretty funny by itself, you know? <laughs> But Trump bashing is pretty basic anyways. I'm not sure I want to go that route. What about Sarah Palin? What's she up to? Who? Right. Well, I do have another idea. All right. Third time's the charm. Hit me with it. What is the best form of comedy? The true beacon? Satire. No. Late night talk shows. Are you joking? Yes. Sitcoms, the funniest form of television since Mr. Ed. I think Mr. Ed is a sitcom. Exactly. <laughs> Do you hear that? I'm already hallucinating laugh tracks. It's the perfect way to tell me when to laugh. <laughs> See? Do you even know how to write a sitcom? Of course I do. See, a character comes in, says their memorable catchphrase, Snap Doodle D, <laughs> and hilarity ensues. <laughs> Stop it. It's not funny. We're living in such a divided and distraught country. Is there anything you can say that could portray that? I know exactly what you're saying. A musical number. Corona, Corona, fuck you, Corona, always six feet away. Stop it. Stop it. Do you have anything real? Anything at all meaningful? Look, I know you're stressed out and you're trying so hard to be funny and memorable. But Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. You get out of here. You see, I think the way to do this isn't through jokes and gimmicks and laugh tracks. What you have to do, what you have to be is honest. Enough of the mask, not the mask that protects us, but the one that shields our voice. You have a voice. Take the opportunity. Use that voice. Use it to unite and to mend, not to push an agenda or to start wars, but to end wars. So please, speak.
and speak so all can hear. Okay, all right. The last few months, I've been cooped up alone, sitting behind a computer screen watching the world burn. I had friends betray me. I had my heart torn out. I never accomplished what I wished to, but that doesn't matter. I have time, but I'm not sure that we as a people have that time. Every day there is senseless violence and endless hate. We split ourselves into us and them, never truly judging a human being by their character, but by race or gender or so many other countless things. It's an unbelievable injustice that no one can seem to correct. Those who spout open-mindedness are some of the most close-minded people I've ever met, living by hatred and never truly understanding. They're not bad people, just misguided. We could all use a little perspective. We put ourselves in boxes and we fight to the teeth to support those boxes. But we must fight for all of us. We must be one with our world and with our communities. Please, I ask you, don't judge. Open your heart and your mind and you will live happily. Don't do that. And every day you spend will be overwhelmed by misguided hatred and bias. Negativities will be your norm. And ladies and gentlemen, we're all going to die. Why spend your days filling a heart with hate, wasting precious time when you could be making the ride better for someone else? Fight for freedom and fight those who restrict that freedom. And to quote every high school public speaker, be kind for everyone's sake. I could probably do a bit more. No, that was perfect. I mean, this was just a monologue. What are we going to do for the rest of it? We'll figure it out. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> I'd hug you, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. All right, we better start heading out. Hey, Jesus. We're wrapping up, friend. Come on. And thank you for all of your help. And remember, six feet apart, yet together. You know it's what you do when you're thinking. Nobody's looking. No one's looking. Well, you got to love a lot, whether you want to. Or you're just dreaming, you're just dreaming. March 16th, 2020. Your diary. Today I got the news that face to face classes have been suspended. That means I'll have more time to breathe and sleep in. Hopefully, I can make this whole time work out for the better. I'll be able to hang out with my boyfriend and with my cats. And, uh, maybe I'll be able to call grandma this time. Anyway, this COVID shit will be over in, like, a month, and I'll be able to hang out with my friends again. March 20th, 2020. Dear Diary, uh, yesterday I got fired. So I'm looking to get another job just to make the ends meet. I wasn't necessarily fired. They call it for load. It still feels like getting fired. And I'm looking for another job, but most companies are running skeleton crews just to keep those labor costs down, and so they're not hiring anybody, so... Yeah. I can't say that the only time I was fired was because of a dumb virus, and not because of me. Honestly, I'm pretty scared, though. On another note, I joined a new Facebook group. It's called a group where we all pretend to be ants in an ant colony. It's keeping me sane. Others could argue that it's the opposite of sane, but I think that detaching from the awful things going on right now can help for at least a little bit. April 3rd, 2020. Dear Diary, so I got a new job. 
The pay isn't as much as I was used to, but at least I'll be able to pay the bills. I never thought I'd go back to fast food. But hey, I get to eat free McDonald's every day. Today I went to Dollar General, and this old man wouldn't leave me alone. I was standing on the X on the floor, wearing my mask, following all the rules. I went to move forward to the next X, but it was gone. So I just took a few more steps forward to keep the social distance. He just stepped closer. He wasn't wearing a mask. He didn't get the hint, I guess. But he stepped closer and he said, I'm getting brownies and ice cream. Back up, old man. I didn't say that, but I wanted to. I've got a hankering for brownies and ice cream. I said, good for you, buddy, as I hurried up to check out. It's like he was trying to make me uncomfortable. Thankfully, that was the end of that. April 20th, 2020. Dear Diary, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I didn't realize how difficult it would be to be this alone. I can't focus on my homework much either, and with finals coming up, I'm getting really worried. I've already cleaned the entire house and cooked myself an elaborate breakfast just to avoid my homework. Two online classes were fine, but all five are really overwhelming. All of my assignments are always due on the same fucking day anyway. Looking ahead, I have two essays, then a research paper, and then another essay, and that's just one week. Hopefully I can work out some sort of routine. Going back to work at Johnson's while keeping the job at McDonald's has been kind of difficult, though. Yeah, Johnson's opened back up, so they called me back to work. I've noticed that I'm becoming more irritable, and a lot of the little things are starting to bug me. But everything will be over soon. And if this isn't cleared up by my birthday, I'm going to be pretty upset. May 25th, 2020. Dear Diary, my boyfriend was supposed to make me dinner, but he's sick and there's a fuck ton of chores to do. I can't have a nice night in with my boyfriend, let alone a house party. And I know it shouldn't make me angry, but why should he sleep out on the couch while I'm cleaning the house on my birthday? I know it's not his fault. And when I'm done with the dishes, I'll probably go drink in the shower again. Alcohol kills the runner, right? At least I can have a bit of fun. June 16th, 2020. Dear Diary, being back to work full time has been kind of nice. If I'm being honest, the whole two jobs thing is kind of wearing me down though. I'm also trying to move and that's really difficult. With the lease ending in just a few weeks, I'm getting really stressed out. Just thinking of all the work that still needs done makes my stomach hurt. I hardly have anything done, and I only have two weeks left. When do I get a break? I can't really complain, though. I did this to myself. When will I learn that I'm spreading myself too thin? I just want all this to end. At work today, uh, my coworker told me that her grandpa has COVID-19 and he's in the hospital struggling with it. One of the ladies at her church had the audacity to tell her that COVID is fake, 100% a hoax, none of it's real. How disrespectful can you be? And one of my other coworkers was supposed to get tested. She hadn't been exposed and she wasn't showing symptoms or anything, but they needed it for a precaution. But she refused. I remember it clear as day. I'm not getting tested for a disease that doesn't exist. That's what she said. July 15th, 2020. Dear Diary, I think I'm losing control. Today, the urge to kill myself was stronger than it has been for years. I nearly couldn't get myself out of bed, but somehow I got to work. Is any of this real? 
I don't even know who I am anymore. I've worked myself to the bone trying to find something to be proud of. But I lost me. What have I gained? Why should I even try? What's the point of being alive? I'm just going to be alone at the end of the day. August 15th, 2020. Dear Diary, Things are changing really fast. I feel like this semester came up way too quickly, but I'm much happier now that school's back in session. I am struggling a bit with the whole homework thing, but I've just realized how beneficial the structure is for me. I'm still trying to figure things out because half of my friends transferred to a four-year college, and, well, the rest of us, we can't really hang out in the theater classroom anymore because of social distancing. I'm struggling a little bit. I also really want to make a big appearance change, like cutting or dyeing my hair. That's a good sign, I guess. It means I'm hopeful. You know, planning things for the future. It means that the worst part is behind me. I've seen the disappointment in your eyes When you caught me for the first time And it didn't look that different Though less surprised When it came around the third time This is me artist would have plenty to write about, but I can't think of anything to embody 2020 other than a scene with a single person standing on a stage, spotlight white hot on them as they scream, we're all going to die for 10 straight minutes. Hell, I can't even watch a movie without feeling like life six months ago is absurd. Scene of people at a diner or a concert, people embracing, when was the last time I even shook someone's hand? What did I use to write before the world went to hell? Oh, fuck my parents. Yep, that sounds like me at 30. And fuck the church, too. Definitely me. God, I miss being 10. And Basil held up the evidence, and the crowded room grew silent. It had been Principal Anders stealing the lunch money all along. The Great Mouse Detective. Fan fiction. Ah, oh, yes. Fifth grade, the assignment for Mrs. Walker's class. Got enough, though, for having Basil call the principal a bastard. <laughs> yeah. It, bastard. It wasn't that bad of a word. It really wasn't. I just didn't want to sound gay. No, oh, no, 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 no. You can't say stuff like that. Yeah, not cool. It took 20 years before I knew any better. People can change. They just often choose not to. You know, I didn't meet an openly gay person until I got to college. No, uh, wait, my best friend in high school was gay. But we weren't supposed to talk about it. You were Republican then, too. Ugh, don't remind me. Going to college ruined you. The liberal homosexual agenda. Oh, well, that's what mom said. Oh, fuck my parents. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got to vote in class today. I picked George Bush. Yeah, that uh, didn't end well. Either time. Well, we went to college. I want to be a journalist, but mom and dad say they don't make any money. Well, they were right about that part. Oh, I haven't eaten in days. If only I could eat the clickbait that I've been writing. Well, I was thinking of becoming a cop, like Uncle Delahoy. No, 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 no. no. That really doesn't end well. Man, fuck the police. Bunch of stormtroopers. You guys have no idea. I said, fuck 
once, but I didn't know it was a bad word. You saw it outside of Grandma's house, spray painted on the curb. Oh, then set it at recess and got grounded. Bastards. Hey, uh, write about love. Love is all you need. You would think that romantic. It turns out gas, electric, and internet are important things, too. I wish a girl would talk to me. What's an internet? Better than the Victoria's Secret catalogs you steal from the trash. Oh, don't be embarrassed. It's also got shopping and a wonderful place that will help you get two degrees called Wikipedia. We actually graduate? Holy shit. Yeah, and we are never going back to school again. Yes. <laughs> eh. Ah, oh, shit. shit. We actually teach now. <laughs> like Miss Buzzard. Uh, gross. And are in grad school. Oh, God damn it. Well, do we like it at least? Teaching? Yes, but we will own a degree rather than a house. Oh, and Uncle Mark posted the following online today. Ours may become the first civilization destroyed. Not by the power of our enemies, but by the ignorance of our teachers and the dangerous nonsense they are teaching our children. In an age of artificial intelligence, they are creating artificial stupidity. Bastard. 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 Eating will still be a privilege, as will school supplies, and other people's respect. Do we ever get married? Yeah, buddy, we get married right after high school. You get to get married two times. <laughs> Hat trick. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, oh, okay, whoa. Uh, Lord's name in vain. Don't worry, we get over that too. <laughs> then say, may God strike me down if... Um, no. <laughs> Wuss. Are we happy at least? Yeah, uh, we are in a band. Sure, sometimes, of course. Hey, I do like living in the mountains. Listen, you have a lot to look forward to. Like what? Like the birth of your first daughter? And the birth of your second. They will always be the best part of our life. But what do they have to look forward to? Our daughters? Oh, yeah, man. The future sounds kind of shitty. just don't know anymore. When did my voice get annoying? Unnecessary apologizing, maybe exploiting all the progress I've made, turning off my crowded brain. I'm sitting on the floor of my bathroom, again. My best friend's in the living room and she's about to send me a text. She knows the routine, so she sends a simple, you good? I'm not good, but I just reply with, having a really rough time, be out in a sec, LOL. A rough time is a really flowery way to put this, but no one really wants to hear about me vomiting up hot Cheetos and ramen, so... My torso is my enemy. Is that stupid to say? 
I don't know. But it is. It's been my enemy since I was a child. I mean, I can literally remember pulling at my stomach and yanking at it. Hello? Yeah, this is her? Yeah. Oh. No. Yeah, that's great. No, thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, bye. Another phone call from the doctor's office telling me that I'm fine. I'm starting to think it's all in my head. Is it? I mean, they do a really good job of making me feel like that. I swear, it's so fucking textbook. I'm a woman, and I walk into my male doctor's office and complaining of fatigue, nausea, stomach pain, and the first thing he asks me is, well, are you pregnant? I swear I'm stuck in a bad movie with the quack doctor. It's all so fucking textbook. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've peed in a cup for this man just for him to tell me I'm fine. Y you know, you think you'd notice something when I've lost 30 pounds in three weeks. I should clarify. This started before quarantine, but I'd be lying if I said that quarantine didn't change everything. It, it started as harmless as any chronic condition can, right? I mean, nausea, then it turned into vomiting. Just this giant cluster of stress made everything worse. The stress of a lack of routine, lack of normalcy, the stress that comes from just not knowing what the fuck is going on with anything. That stress turned the nausea into vomiting, and the vomiting eventually led me to just not eating anything at all. Even just a drink of water would make my entire lower half feel like it was on fire. My body could not stand to have anything inside it. So I began to puke every day. Usually several times a day. Sometimes I, I wouldn't even have anything to throw up. It was just the act of gagging myself and dry heaving would make me feel better. And so when I tell my doctor this, I understand why he thinks it's in my head. It's at least like connected, right? The feeling of emptiness is almost addicting, you know? I mean, in a world of so much uncertainty, it's nice to have that to rely on, that feeling of emptiness. In this world of catastrophe and chaos, it's so easy for me to focus on my problems. It's so easy for me to hyper-focus on myself and not everything else. It's not that I don't care. I do. I, I really do. But it's just so easy for me to ignore COVID, to ignore the racial injustices, to ignore the riots, because all I can think about is my stomach all the time. And, and I realize the sheer privilege that exists in me being able to do that. And again, it's not that I don't care, but how addicting is it to ignore the news, to just live inside your own world? I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times I've literally brought a pillow in with me to the bathroom because I knew I was going to be in there for a while. I don't know. In this time where 
so many big issues matter. I guess I just want to feel like mine matter too. And I know that they do, but... I guess what I'm trying to say is... More than ever... I just want to feel seen. And I know I'm not alone in that. I think everyone right now just wants to be seen. Leave like a tree, take a while. What am I supposed to do all day? I'm sure you'll figure something out. Certainly got plenty of time. Maybe this quarantine is a chance to finally finish unpacking. That sounds perfect. I gotta go before traffic gets too bad. Love you. Love you. Let's get this over with. The book thief. Percy Jackson and the Olympians. <laughs> Twilight. Harry Potter, the boy who lived. J.K. Rowling, huh? Man, times have changed. Hi, John. Yeah, I'm just staying home for now. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Debbie was working on that last week, wasn't she? Uh-huh. Sure, I don't mind. I'll email Debbie to send... Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for your email then. Uh-huh. No problem. Thanks, John. Bye. Did you see the way they just let him die? I don't see what's so difficult about following the rules. Correction, they didn't let him die, they murdered him. It's just a mask, just a little piece of cloth. Said he couldn't breathe. And people who say they can't breathe in a mask? Seriously? He cried out for his mother. I wouldn't be surprised if people really did start drinking bleach. He was not resisting arrest. Eight minutes and 46 seconds. Finally. Hello, I'm here. Hi, uh, delivery for uh, Christine? Yes, thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, you too. Dr. Fauci's testimony was, as you might expect, sobering and at odds, at times at odds with the president. While the administration has assured there will be no second wave, Dr. Fauci said we still haven't gotten the first wave under control yet. U.S. President Donald Trump is threatening protesters with serious prison time after demonstrations near the White House Monday night. He tweeted this out not long ago, warning they could face 10 years for vandalizing a statue. Protesters in nearby Lafayette Park. There's a trend taking place across the country as businesses from hair salons to doctor's offices begin to reopen. Customers are being asked to sign waivers to prevent coronavirus lawsuits. Defense attorney Chip Merlin discusses what the coronavirus waiver includes and if it will actually protect a business owner from a lawsuit. God, I hate these things. It gets so hot and I swear I can't breathe in them. No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace.
You know, I heard the CDC says we shouldn't even be wearing masks. And the World Health Organization. Whose streets? Our streets. Whose streets? Our streets. Our streets and businesses are being destroyed by these thugs. How hard is it to protest peacefully? You know, Martin Luther King said, the ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral, begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rayshard Brooks, Ahmaud Arbery, Botham Jean, Elijah McClain. Hello? Yep, I got your emails. I'm actually close to finishing up the presentation right now. Uh-huh. Right, I just have to clean it up a little this afternoon. I should get it to you tomorrow morning. All right, thanks, John. Bye. That's weird. Hello? My uh, delivery for uh, Christine? Uh, are you sure you have the right address? I didn't order anything. Uh, this says unit uh, 208 for uh, Christine, right? I mean, that's my apartment, but I didn't... Uh, have a good day. Free food is free food, I guess. Uh, this is ridiculous! I have rights! You can't force me to wear a mask! I'm not your slave! So we're just supposed to drive by the house? And I'm not getting vaccinated. And she'll be standing in the yard in her cap and gown. There is no way Bill Gates is chipping me with his 5G device. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. So what are you decorating your car with? Did you see that video I shared on my timeline? Oh, yeah. That's cool. So how do they get their degrees? COVID isn't real. It's a plandemic. Yeah, I guess that's better than nothing. Hi, Debbie. Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I was wanting to ask you really quick. I know John sent me the numbers from the last few months, but I was wondering if you had the reports uh, closer to the beginning of the new year. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Well, I know we're supposed to suspend office visits right now, but I was wondering if there's any way I could meet you there and get those from you. Wait, what? Why would they fire you? Oh my gosh, Debbie, I'm so sorry to hear that. No, no, I'll bug John about it. It's no big deal. No, Debbie, don't worry about it. I just hope you're doing okay. Okay? At least you have your girls with you to keep you company. Mm-hmm. Give them lots of kisses and treats for me, okay? Okay, Debbie. We'll talk later. Stay safe. Bye now. Honey, I'm home. You're early. Accounts got backed up, so they sent the rest of sales home early so they can get, get caught up for tomorrow. Lucky me. Lucky me. <laughs> How was work? Ah, uh, the usual, just more of it, surprisingly enough. How's it going holding down the fort? Well, not bad. A little boring, but that's to be expected. Getting repetitive? What? Never. <laughs> Debbie got laid off. Damn, that's too bad. You really liked working with her, didn't you? Yeah, she was always on top of things. Dang. Yeah. Dinner. What should we do for dinner? Right. Food. I was thinking we can throw some leftovers together. Come on. Not pizza. I'm so sick of pizza.
you going to Matt's 4th of July party? I can't wait to see everyone. I haven't been able to buy real toilet paper in weeks. I can't stand my roots. I hope my stylist starts booking again soon. Do you know of any tattoo shops that are open? I need some new ink. I can't wait for our Planet Fitness to open back up. Did you hear about 24-hour fitness? They filed for bankruptcy. They're closing 13 stores. I really need to hit the gym. I'm sure you'll figure something out. You certainly got plenty of time. What? I, I said, I'm uh, sure you'll figure it out. You were wondering what you were going to do today? Don't forget to wake up. Love you. Got to send off that project. Black Lives Matter! Let us in! Let us work! Black Lives Matter! Let us in! Let us work! Black Lives Matter! Let us in! Let us work! Harry Potter. Times have changed. Well, if the masks work, then why do we have to stand six feet apart? See, things are reopening. I knew it was a hoax. What about those protesters? They didn't look six feet apart to me. It's really not a big deal. You've had the flu before, right? Oh, hi, John. Yeah, I'm still at home. Self-quarantining. Yeah. No, we're doing fine so far. Mm -hmm. Wait, you mean the one I just sent you this morning? That Debbie was working on first before... What? Oh, I'm sorry, John. Can I call you back? I'm sorry, I... Whoa, careful, you're gonna crack your screen again. What are you doing home? It's so early. What are you talking about? I'm just about to leave. You all right? You look like you should eat something. I gotta go before traffic gets too bad. Love you. Fuck. Fuck. There is Delivery no way Bill Gates is shipping me with this 5G device. Oh. Street. Our street. Delivery for Christine. Do you know how many tattoo shops that are open? I don't need just a little piece of paper. I have a good neighbor with my real Christine. toilet paper and the things Honey. are reopening. Honey. God will like He'd burn us to the ground Then back on the Mayflower He'd follow us around And I have some tales Two stories to tell School's out Worldwide pandemic causing mass shutdown? Jeez.
A seven months summer. That's enough free time to kill a horse. Hell, I, I could do anything. All right, listen. This is your chance. No more excuses. You're going to take this time and you're going to perfect yourself. This is a golden opportunity, my friend, and we are not going to squander it. No, 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 I, I, I do not care, Tom. Look, I love you, buddy, but you got to get your shit together and stop talking to yourself. I have a plan, a good one. You see, in seven months, there's an art show downtown. Paintings, sculptures, what have you, all made by locals. And as it turns out, a certain young woman will be there. This girl, she is incredible. A, a beacon of light in a drowning fog. She, she outshines all. And as a result, I am greatly infatuated. But the problem arises that... I am definitely not to the level of success that befits her best, and attempting to establish a relationship with someone of this caliber would be like trying to chop down a tree with chopsticks. So, the solution? Buy an axe. For the tree, not the girl. Anyhow, my plan. My plan is to take this isolation and use it. I'll, I'll exercise and slim down and, and become something better than I've ever been. I'll, I'll paint and, and submit a masterpiece. I'll work hard and, and build a mass portfolio. This, hopefully, will show that I'm worth a little bit more. All I need is seven months. I'm going to finally do it. It'll be different. Yes, I, I admit. I have a history of, of hyping myself up and, and, and talking a big game without doing anything, sure, but, but not this time. Not this time. What choice do I have? Stop trying to talk me out of it. Look, I have time. I have time and I have talent. What I don't need is you trying to get into my head. Look. Tom, just remember the end goal, right? Let's say Jada rejects us. It wouldn't be the end of the world. We'd still be a better person. And you know we need it. Remember the goal. The goal is, is, is happiness, man. The goal is, is artistry. The goal is... It's, it's admiration and, and respect, and, and the goal is it's love, and, and the goal, the goal is, the... I'm sorry, I got a little riled up, um, you'll, uh, have to excuse Tom here, he's a bit more negative than I am. Except he's... he's not. He's... he's me. He's, he's, he's my anxiety, my, my doubts, my panic, my regrets. He... I didn't ask for him, but... well... he won't leave. It's, it's my fault, I, I guess, uh, fueling the flames, talking for him, but he does make a good point. I, I am a failure. I always have been. No, 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 no. Tom, remember positive thoughts? Remember the tide? In... And out. It's not easy. Always feeling like something is watching. Always judging. I know it's in my head, but 
knowing doesn't stop the fear. It doesn't stop the the choking. It doesn't stop the pain. It doesn't fucking do anything. I'm I'm sorry that that was inappropriate. Where was I? Right, the future. Sorry, I seem to have lost my train of thought. Uh, you know, maybe being cooped up isn't such a good thing. But it makes you wonder, what choice do we have? I woke up from a nightmare to a dream I've been known for singing in my sleep It's all been such a blur The devil's had his turn Be my chair all the way over there. Is this better? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Are we? Uh, six feet. Oh, you're right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Have we met? Does it matter? You wanted this chair moved farther in. I've moved it for you. You're right. Thank you. And now I think I'll just stay here and rest a while. You know, moving this chair was hard work. Okay. What should I do? You should rest as well. But I just woke up. Have it your way. Just keep your distance. You know, it's really hard to rest with you shuffling around like that. I'm sorry. Stop that. I did. I stopped moving. No. Stop apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeez. Oh. I'm so... Listen. I don't know who you are. I don't know how you got here. I appreciate the help with the chair. I really do. And I don't mind if you stay a while, but I think I deserve to know who you are. And what is happening with my room? I do remember before I went to sleep that everything was in its place. But now everything's moved off. Everything's at a distance. Finally. What? You're waking up. Huh. Yes, you're right. Thank God. That was awful. I know, right? I was asleep for so long. I had a terrible nightmare. Oh, I know. You know? I know. You know. I know. You know? Stop I that. Know. Can I get my things, all of them, moved back to their places, please? Uh, sure.
Your friends? Yeah. Do you mind? Nope. Now then, tell me about your nightmare. I thought you'd never ask. I know. You know? I know. You know. Stop. Let's not do that again. Very well. Your nightmare? Well, it was my reoccurring zombie dream again. Oh no, not zombies again. They're so played out. This time was different, I promise. I'm listening. Well, I was with my husband, and everything was sort of fine in the beginning. I mean, we knew the threat was out there, the zombies. But they were far away, so we figured we were safe. How is this any different from your previous zombie dreams? This time we weren't moving. Always before in my dream, I'm constantly moving forward, and that's what keeps me safe. From, because zombies doesn't don't move very fast. Oh yeah, I forgot. So anyway, we're just stuck at home, and I keep thinking that maybe we would be safer if we did get moving. But all the cars were gone. Gone? What do you mean? Well, I looked outside at the driveway, and it's empty. Oh, and the house switches at this point. What do you mean, switches? We're at my parents' house now, but they're not home. It's just us and a few others. Well, who are they? Unclear. Continue. So, you know the thing about zombies? Yes, everyone knows the thing about zombies. All you have to do is just keep moving forward. They'll never catch up to you if you keep moving forward at a reasonable pace. Yes, I've, I've heard the theory. So, like, why does anyone ever die in the movies by a zombie? It's ridiculous. I don't know. I, I can't imagine. They could just keep moving forward and put a lot of distance between them and the zombies, and then they'd be fine. But they don't, because they're stupid, stupid Hollywood horror movie tropes. No, no, not stupid. Then what? Distracted. They get distracted. They stop moving because they're easily distracted, and they think the threat is far, far away, and that's when they stop moving, and it catches up to them. But, well, what catches up with them? The zombies. The threat. Well, which one is it? Huh? Never mind. Continue. Where was I? Oh, right. So, in my dream, I was at my parent. I looked out the window at the, my parents' house where we were holed up, and all the cars were gone. Also, the driveway was dirt again, like when I was a kid. Does uh does that matter? No, not really. Anyway, there was no way for us to escape, so we started boarding up all the windows and doors. Uh. Never works. That's how it always happens in the movies. I know, right? And that's exactly what happens in the dream. I look outside and... Ah, stop right there. What? How can you look outside through a boarded up window? I don't know. I guess there was a slit. Well, was there? Was there a slit? I don't know. How can you not know it's your dream? Okay, okay, there wasn't a slit. That window wasn't boarded up. So you forgot to board up that window. You forgot that window. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. What? That's how it always happens in the movies. <sighs> can we just get through this? Hey, it's your party. Right. Anyway, so I look out the window. They're all over the lawn. They're coming in closer. Some of them are already banging on the side of the house. Brains! Brains! No, no, not like that. What do you mean? Zombies always want brains. Well, they weren't really zombies. They were people I knew. People I know. 
friends, neighbors, regular people. Regular people turned into zombies, right? No, not really. If they were just regular people, then why were you afraid of them? I don't know. Anyway, somehow we ended up outside and we were fighting them just like in a video game, just knocking them down one after another. We were knocking them down with bats and boards and and they were fighting each other too. It became impossible to tell who was on our side. And there were bodies all over the lawn. And then I looked up in the distance. Yes. One of them had another on the ground, holding him down. And everything got really slow. And I couldn't breathe. <sighs> I can't breathe. Wait, wait, what's going on? I can't breathe. Well, uh, yes, you can. Just just, uh, calm down. I can't. I can't. I can't breathe. Okay, uh, 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 close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, five things you can see. The ocean. Waves. Sand, black rocks in the sand, words. Words? Yeah, words written in the sand, and the tide comes and washes them away. Okay. Four things you can hear. Laughter, music, birds chirping, Waves crashing. Three things you can smell. Summer. And I can taste it too. Uh, That's only one thing. And it's enough. One thing you can feel. Butter? much. Thank you. I'm still asleep, aren't I? Yes. And my nightmare, it's real. It's the real world. Yes. I don't think I want to wake up. Well, you have to. Why? You know. I know? Yes. You know. It's not safe out there. It's never been safe out there for some. No more hiding. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to speak up. You have to say something. You have to do something. Yes. I know. Wake up. It was on the stage that she saw me again. A group of friends came to support me in my performance of Our Town. After that, we started talking again. 
And in those talks, we realized we still loved each other. So, we started dating again. Yes, I said again. Six years after our breakup, we were trying again. Of course, we both had questions. Were things going to be different this time around? Are we sure this is a good idea? A few months passed, and we decided to take a small vacation together. It was spring break, and I'd finally made up my mind. She's definitely the one. Unfortunately, I didn't really have money for a ring at the time. However, on our vacation to Silver Dollar City, there was a little blacksmith shop that made rings out of handcraft nails. You know, like they used to use in old buildings way back when. I knew it wasn't permanent, but it was something I could afford until I could get her a real ring. So, as you can guess, I had a certain question for her. I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that planning a wedding is tough. It's not just the details and the checklists, it's the stress as well. Did we call the florist? Was everything still set up with the DJ? Has the photographer been paid? We even planned for the unexpected, like, what if the cake isn't ready, or what if a bridesmaid or a groomsman can't make it? We finally thought we had everything nailed into its final place. But, of course, nothing can be that simple. There was one thing we didn't think we would need a plan for. Global pandemic. Now, a whole new set of questions were coming that we had no answers for. Will masks be required? Will everyone be social distancing? Not to mention the questions we had to ask for ourselves. Is the church going to open back up? Do we need to postpone the wedding? Wait! No, we can't actually do that. You see, she's got a thing about numbers. Everything has to be even. When we watch TV, the volume has to be on an even number. The same goes for the radio volume in the car. It's a little crazy, but it's crazy things like that that make you realize how much you love someone for who they are. You know, it's either 2020 or we wait two more years. It's got to be this year. All of our questions were eventually answered one way or another, albeit things were a little odd, but if you're looking for a crazier wedding, look no further than a pandemic wedding. In the church, we had to set everyone who wasn't already around each other during quarantine away from others, not to mention only using every other pew. I'll admit there were a few times I had to ask myself, do I know them? It's a little hard to recognize even your closest family member when you can only see half their face. But looking out at the people who were still able to come, I could tell they were happy they did. The reception area also made sure we social distance everyone properly, and it was good to see everyone enjoying themselves during these strange times. And sometimes that's exactly what you need during times like this. Sometimes you have to ask those silly questions. Because sometimes they're not as silly as you might think. Sometimes you just need something to look forward to, even if it's just dinner together. I remember the before. I remember a time when humans became so enraptured with their phone screens 
that suddenly staring through a window with the square of sunlight was enough. Pictures became reality, and hidden behind filters, we convinced ourselves that with the right, that perfection could be obtained with the right amount of contrast. We told ourselves that photographs spoke not only abstract words, but told stories of a life we should have, and then screens became all we had. Human connection was traded for Wi-Fi connection. Without internet, isolation turned into something even more lonely. Through years, we had turned our bodies into lines of code, and we had forgotten beauty already tangled in our grasp. That is, until we couldn't have it anymore. And then we started tearing ourselves from the outlets. We remembered we are not powered by electricity. And the things we had averted our eyes from in lieu of scrolling were admired with a wonder we had grown out of along with childhood. I too had fallen victim to the wires tangling our hands to our devices. For so long, I had lost the sparkle in my eyes that I now realized cannot be artificially manufactured. It comes from the reflection of amazement, only ignited by wonders minimally disturbed by human hands. And in that, I finally understood poetry again, like a language getting rusty from disuse. When I distanced myself from metaphors, I had lessened the meaning in my own mind and failed to understand the strength of a sunset. Because when I finally took a moment to look to the sky as fiery hues painted the horizon, I remembered how to do it justice. I remembered how swirls of orange and red could reach into my lungs and pull my breath into the distance. I remembered how waning sunlight teased my skin and a gentle golden wave made everything a bit softer. The haze of nature somehow makes all it touches just a bit more beautiful. And then I started closing my eyes sometimes, listening to the ebb and flow of noises around me. The soft chatter of languages that humans could never understand starting through the trees. I was reminded the people are but a fraction of this life, and every corner of this earth is bursting with the kind we don't always realize is rushes alongside us. I started to look skyward when the day died down, and when I saw a brilliant array of stars with clear eyes for the first time, I was reminded of what it felt like to believe in magic. I looked into the galaxy with understanding and something about it seemed more alive than any place I could climb. Like someone dipped a paintbrush in the heavens, painting light across the darkness with gentle strokes. I looked into a, a million sparkling eyes blinking in the distance and anything seemed possible. All through this, as I spent more time looking up then into the depths of a single moment of posed perfection, I reached out to those I cherished. Physical contact is an underappreciated intimacy. The importance is only realized when it is swept away. And when you can't reach out with your hands, you find ways to make up for it. In a time when touch becomes toxic, everyone starts to find the pot within them because words are all they have left. And while hate weaves through society like a constant death, I have heard more cries of love in these times than I remembered before, because while hate is a loud beast screaming until the spotlight stays fixed in its direction, if only to silence it, love is a quiet strength, and it lies more in gentle touches than screams. The sickness that plagues our world is not a blessing. 
It has taken the breath of many in a way much more sinister than sunset because it has no intention of giving that breath back. But sometimes, the darkest times, are what light up the things we miss the most as we live in complacency. I can only hope that as we rebuild the world from the rubble, we don't forget what we learned from the debris. Hearts and arrow my 